Hello. Good morning, Hello. and and thank you for joining us for the Sales and Marketing Friday Talks. After a short summer break, every second Friday we share insights, best practices, and anecdotes from technology companies. And today we have a very interesting topic to be discussed. There are over eight thousand different marketing technologies uh, and solutions on the market and the number uh, keeps growing the recent gartner study reveals that large companies pay more for marketing technologies than for salaries for their marketing employees so uh, let's uh, try to figure out what is behind this uh, this trend and uh, why it's so um, first, I would like uh, to ask Roland, who actually has studied this Gartner report recently, what, what exactly this report is about and what it reveals uh, for us. Yes, well, uh, the report is, is, is actually called uh, uh, Gartner, uh, Gartner CMO Survey. Actually, it's mm -hmm. the State of Marketing Budgets 2021, and it's based on insights from Gartner Annual CMO Spend Survey. Uh, they are covering uh, quite uh, quite many industries, not only technologies, but uh, things uh, which include consumer products, financial mm -hmm. services, retail, etc. And uh, one thing that uh, that drove my attention is that uh, is the finding that actually um, companies are now spending more on uh, marketing technologies than they are spending on uh, their own marketing mm -hmm. employees. Actually, according to Gartner, it turns out that companies spend 26.6% on marketing technologies, whereas they spend 25% uh, on um, labor. Yeah, so, it's a, yeah. It's, so it's, a, it's a quite heavy, heavy spending, actually, on, on technologies. Yes, actually, the total. I, I was... Yes, I was I, I was surprised, but uh, and and also we, we need to keep in mind that this is an average number, and I imagine that uh, there probably are some companies which are spending much less, and there are companies which are spending perhaps three times mm -hmm. more on technologies uh, than they spend on employees. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, of course, technologies uh, today probably you know hard to imagine any uh, business or any area of the business where you can survive without technologies and it's only obvious that uh, you know investments to technologies grows and also you know tools what we use on daily basis but what is what is interesting uh, really that um, for companies who are like uh, uh, good in terms of resources like big companies as you said whom, whom gardeners have um, asked for this for this information for this feedback the they really invest much more and it seems so much more into technologies rather than to something else in the marketing uh, landscape so uh, w w yeah yeah and i think i think it just shows you know like in, like in military it's not enough to buy you know guns or cannons you need mm -hmm. to buy ammunition as well to win in 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 in, in a battlefield i think the same relates to marketing functions as well today because Technologies essentially they are used to mm -hmm. enhance and amplify what uh, what humans are are doing anyhow, and it just turns out uh, that just to optimize this function and get the most uh, most return of uh, on uh, on marketing, you also need to add the technologies in the mix, because if you are not, what happens actually is that you're falling uh, falling behind competition. I would I would imagine that that uh, that you know having a marketer. Pro plus uh, technologies equals impact of having probably two and a half marketers probably that would be that would be my assumption and i think this also also means that today smaller smaller companies uh, startups uh, also need to think about their own technology technology choice for marketing and they need to think mm -hmm. uh, how to equip uh, their own marketing teams with the right technologies but that is exactly what we uh, would like to discuss today. And I hope yeah. that the people who has joined us uh, live uh, will be also sharing their insights and thoughts around this uh, uh, through comments. So feel free, please, please do share and uh, participate in our conversation as well. But, uh, you know, I, I think uh, that maybe even uh, smaller companies, uh, like you mentioned, like startups and uh, you know, maybe well-established companies, but still like uh, in the growing mode and uh, uh, they're quite lean in terms of resources. 
they have much more advantages uh, versus bigger companies because they don't have this legacy of uh, old technologies or old processes, you know, bunch of people doing some, you know, stuff and so on. So they exactly can, um, you know, win this competition if they employ right set of technologies and they uh, use it to kind of smartly. Because another challenge, what I have seen, uh, you know, from, from our uh cooperations with with uh, many companies uh that technology is not always really something what uh, um, helps you uh, do things sometimes it consumes a lot of your resources just to keep this technology yes. running and that is also another aspect of any technology but in this case marketing as well Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because you see, I think I think the, the here are here are many challenges companies have. And, yeah. and first of all, I think it's a it's a it's a process process and thinking behind it and strategy. Because you know, uh, as as we talk, technologies help you to amplify impact of people, right? Yeah. But uh, but it, but it only makes sense to amplify something that is already pretty pretty good, pretty well thought thought of. Uh, pretty well integrated with other processes because if you amplify just you know crappy processes you go you get <laughs> you get them amplified you get more crappy processes which, which do not uh, do not doesn't necessary uh, necessary help and uh, i think mm -hmm. another challenge is that uh, you know dealing with technologies is a uh, rather new thing to marketing because you need you need that again opens doors for quite a lot of questions first of all which technology to choose Right. Yeah. How to how to make sure you're trained to use it to use it? How do you integrate it with other technologies? How do you make sure that this it is uh, safe, compliant? Let's say with with uh, yeah. There GDPR. are a lot of questions. Yeah, to be answered. Yeah, uh, I I agree, and I think um, that is something what uh, uh, many companies do not maybe take into full consideration when they have a decision about the technology. So they think, oh, we will buy you know, this great tool, and then everything will start to work much better. In reality, uh, it's not always like that. Um, and we have seen many failures as well when, you know, either wrong technology or technology which is uh, used in the wrong way uh, doesn't really help you to, to grow business. Yes, I so think... So what, what do you think would be the success criteria? How, how you think uh, companies should look at the selection of technologies, what they need to consider uh, when yes. they make this. Yeah, decision. I think I think first of all, company needs to be clear uh, on what what exactly they want to uh, want to do. Uh, that's that, that that's, that's well, the, they they need to have point. an answer to question why why this technology is needed, right? Because again, yes. uh, especially talking about the marketing automation, uh, many many times uh, we have seen a lot of hands rising. Uh, you know, we want to, to have marketing technology or marketing automation implement and can you help us? Can you help us? And so on. And then in the end, when you ask, OK, but why? Why do you need it? What exactly you want to achieve with that? Very rarely you hear uh, really kind of well defined answers and uh, clear understanding uh, behind that. Yes. And, and also it's important to understand that uh, um, in most cases, uh, technologies are not enough. Somebody needs to operate. Somebody needs to oversee. Somebody needs to needs to yes. analyze data. So, uh, of course, technologies are a lot to scale, and they take away lots of manual work. But then they create a new kind of work on their own. Because yeah, they... it, basically, it's also about the the competencies and skill set of your marketing team changing along with this uh, development of technologies and uh, uh, adoption of technologies within your organization. So this is something you need to plan as well uh, properly. Yes, I think I think a good exception though are marketing technologies which are real for individual use and which are mm -hmm. real simple. Like like good example and 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 probably my 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 more my, my favorite. Uh, favorite marketing technology would be a simple tool called Calendly.com, which allows to schedule a calls. <laughs> and, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. and then it's like even free version is good enough. And particularly if you are in international business and, and, you know, conversation when we will have the next call, sometimes are quite challenging because you need to consider different time zones and confusion is easy. And then tool like that works just, you know, brilliantly. Takes, yeah, takes agree, a lot of problems away. 
Uh, there are many different alternatives to that. Yeah, but in general, yeah. that's that's very convenient. Uh, but again, coming back to these criteria, uh, how to select. So first of all, it's really about understanding uh, and having an answer uh, to question why. Why do you need this yes. technology or set of technologies? And uh, you should avoid, uh, you know, making technology as, an, uh, as, as your main objective to be implemented, right? So it, it, then it will be probably very, very likely uh, not bringing you the outcomes you maybe expecting or looking after. Uh, but secondly, it's about really um, understanding capabilities uh, of your team, of your infrastructure, what exactly you know already exists, how it will be integrated, understanding the complexity which will be involved into adopting this technology. Anything yeah, else also, you think? Yeah, it also involves uh, actually training training users which is uh, mm -hmm. incredibly important, particularly if the use of technology, let's say in marketing directly impacts sales, right? And if, if uh, for example, we talk about marketing uh, automation, if we talk about lead generation, mm -hmm. it's absolutely necessary to first of all, have discussion with, with the sales team, explain the new process, uh, explain what will happen, agree about definition of lead because and I have seen that in my professional experience as well, that uh, that let's say leads are uh, generated, they are uh, pre-qualified by marketing, and they are just uh, rotting for weeks because actually nobody from sales is, are, is, is picking up leads, nobody's making follow-up because it turns mm -hmm. out there mm -hmm. wasn't, uh, wasn't, um, wasn't discussion, there was no executive sponsorship and sales real didn't, didn't understand what's, uh, what's, uh, what's happening. Yeah, it's also very important that you really first design the process and then you map it with technology, either existing or then you see, okay, what gaps you have and to which technologies can help you. And uh, then then you have a complete picture. Then you start to implement it and then you, you start to use it, uh, you know, aligned to the to the process you, you want to run and not vice mm -hmm. versa. Yes, and mm -hmm. and another thing like like my own my own finding with, with technologies is that uh, again, and, and somebody may say that uh, that your relevance are telling it out of self-interest, but uh, but really, I think uh, the fastest and best way to implement uh, technologies or a set of technologies is actually to rely on on external partner who have been working with these technologies for a while, who have vetted it, who has understood the security impacts, GDPR impacts, and so on. Because if you are if you are uh, trying to just do a simple thing as figure out how technology works or evaluate it or, or, or figure out how GDPR works, it becomes extremely, extremely time consuming task because setting up technology on itself, it's probably easy. You need a, you need a credit card, start a free trial. After that, you pay, I don't know, $9.99 per month. But uh, all the all the small details, all how to work, uh, how to work with this with this uh, with this technology setting up learning testing yeah. validating all these are not typical tasks of uh, marketing and they are also very very time consuming until you figure out what uh, what uh, things really work how to integrate together let's say your landing page platform with marketing automation or your video platform with marketing automation uh, how to integrate with, with CRM. CRM yes yes yeah so that's that's yeah. uh, Quite, uh, quite a software project, actually. That's a uh, software uh, implementation project. <laughs> us being working with technology companies mainly, uh, we quite, quite often face uh, very professional people, right, who are very deep into different type of technologies. But in most of cases, if I recall our projects, uh, they, they trusted us uh, to help them implement uh, specifically marketing technologies. Though there were a couple of cases, uh, and unfortunately, there were really then um, not so successful in terms of, you know, uh, launching campaigns in time and, and uh, in, in a certain quality because uh, people decided to, to do technology part internally. So, of course, for obvious reason, they had a, a professionals, they had even some technologies already in place. But then it's about a matter of prioritization. It's a matter of, you know, resource availability for making things happen very quick and fast. 
it's also about experience. One thing, if you are just, you know, a developer and you know how to build a, a web page, another thing is how to build the landing page, which converts and which brings uh, leads to you. Those are, uh, in one hand, similar, but same time, very, very different uh, uh, tasks. And uh, that is something also to be considered uh, when you decide, okay, how do we will, how we will implement these technologies? You have to uh, really uh, critically assess not only your technical capabilities of doing it, but also capacity of doing it in time and uh, being very agile and fast. Because when it comes to the marketing, you should be very, very fast. Yes, yes, exactly. And, and one more thing which companies often underestimate is actually internal cost. Uh, because, mm -hmm. again, working with the tech companies, uh, they very often are more than qualified to, let's say, develop a, a, a web page, let's say, landing page, right? But uh, companies very often underestimate how much work it will really take for their developers to develop site te uh, technologically, involve designers, involve copywriters. And yes. uh, after all, if you have highly qualified, uh, qualified uh, developer, probably it's better to use that person on customer's project when uh, where uh, you know uh, revenue per hour is perhaps 80 100 maybe 200 uh, euros rather than have the same people spend uh, eight hours to develop <laughs> technically very nice page <laughs> which has let's say ugly design and <laughs> and doesn't uh, the, doesn't work yeah it's it's in the end it's decision of you of, of any company right but uh, we we have spent uh, some time you know now discussing uh, how to uh, consider selection of the technology but let's also try to understand what are these market techn marketing technologies are about and uh, um as as i mentioned in the very beginning there are more than uh, 8,000 of different tools available. And there is a very good uh, place for you to go if you are interested to more specifically see what are these technologies. It's called martech5000.com. Uh, this guy started already a few years back collecting all the information about uh, marketing tools available and started to group them and, and put it on the one single page. And you will see uh, how many uh, those tools nowadays are available? There are they they put it into six categories, and then I have counted that it's almost fifty subcategories uh, within this uh, uh, you know the report what they they publish. So there are really plenty of different tools. Uh, what you know probably any of you can uh, find something useful for your tasks. But uh, just for sake of simplicity. Uh, let's let's try to maybe uh, see what exactly in in most of B two B and our projects we have seen as as most relevant technologies. And I think uh, I would name probably there are tools for lead sourcing. So if you are thinking of you know really understanding who are those customers whom um, your solution or product could be interested, there are different ways how you can find them. Uh, you can do, do, do some IP screening when people are visiting your page and see, you know, from where they come, uh, what they're interested about. Then you have some uh, tools which uh, and, and services which provide you uh, ability to identify potential leads based on their technology profile and so on and so forth. That would be one group what I, I would say are useful for technology and B2B uh campaigns and uh, and and then projects what what else wrong uh, you have anything in mind as well what well, would, would be the next I would, one I, like, like the way the way i look at uh, at um, business growth and lead generation at tech companies uh, to me it seems that marketing automation actually is 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 the central tool which is which is necessary to uh, to be able to grow to to grow the yes. business and let me give yes. just a simple example for example if you are running a webinar what does it involve? You need first, first of all, you need to uh, register people. You need to confirm the registration, probably over the email. Yeah, so that's already a message. Then you need to remind about the event a week before. Probably you need to remind a day before, and probably fifteen minutes before event, you need to remind another time and send a link to event. Mm -hmm, right? That's mm -hmm. that's that's four emails. And if you assume that uh, for a webinar, um, hundred people are registered. It means already 400 emails, 
right? So without automation, it very quickly becomes unpractical. Absolutely, and, absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and then a question, what happens after the webinar, right? Probably you want to handle uh, people who participated differently, differently from those who didn't show up and differently from those who showed up but didn't mm -hmm. last until the end. So you may want to think about uh, sending over things like recordings, case studies, invitation to book a call with your sales representative, and so on. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. and as a result, just out of uh, such a fairly simple event, grows quite a complex chain of communications. And the only way you can reasonably handle that is via marketing automation. And why do you want to do that? You want to do that for a simple reason, because you want to engage those people, you want mm -hmm. to make sure that they had a chance to uh, view your webinar, and you want to make sure that you follow up and uh, have a conversations with those who are really interested. Yeah, and, I, I totally yeah. agree. I think uh, the the automation in general it enters you know different areas of the business, but marketing especially, and it's not only marketing, also sales automation. Because then, when you have acquired the lead, as you just described, you have some certain steps you you move them through. Uh, you know, then you qualify, and that is something also very very important task. And we we have you know heard a lot of complaints from sales people who say hey there are not very good leads because they are low quality they are not you know uh, qualifying for this and that criteria so that is again something what marketing can do at very big scale by employing right tools and ra right marketing automation uh, as well uh, but what what else i think is is important to consider when you think of your marketing uh, technology stack is also, how do you acquire these leads? So typically companies have the web page uh, based on some WordPress or other CMS. Um, we have seen that um, you can reach much more flexibility and agility and even better results with more dedicated landing page tools, right? It's again, uh, not uh, uh, mandatory to use them, but uh, typically these guys who are focusing on landing page specific uh, the tools they provide you really uh, great uh, capabilities of you know a b yeah. testing optimization integration speed, a, a speed uh, you know mobile versions of the of the pages and and so on and so forth yes. so they, this is another component what i also would put on the table if you consider yes, like for your company to to yes uh, uh, absolutely and for for many reasons that you outlined but also also for the share speed because you know if you're running campaign and you start in the morning probably by afternoon you see how well it goes and you may need to make first changes let's say to visuals maybe to call to actions on your yes. landing page and so on how do you do it with uh, with let's say platform for landing pages you just do it if you don't have that, perhaps you need to submit a ticket to your developer team. They have yeah. SLA to respond in two weeks, and two weeks in digital marketing is just forever. It it's a lost opportunity in the end of the day. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and Andres, um, yes. Andres, we have one, 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 one question from our friend Andre Nichman. Uh, he's asking which video mm. platforms have marketing automation. And I know, and I, I know you are as CTO for company have 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 looked at quite a bit of different video. Uh, video platforms. What do you think about automation part? Yeah, I think now automation enters almost every tool. What you, I, I have seen like tools for the customer outreach, like I don't know, based on LinkedIn or based on others, they, they all provide like you possibility to automate your, your processes. How do you outreach customers? And there are tools which are providing the video uh, based uh, engagement with the customer like Bonjoro, I guess that was the name. There are uh, like webinar platforms. They're all starting to also provide you automation uh, of the process because this is <laughs> the reality, as Roland said. You you need to go more and more scale, and uh, that is what requires also automated approach. Uh, I, I I cannot uh, maybe call a specific name of the of the tool, uh, but Andre, if you're interested, we can discuss it. As I said, like Bonjoro is one of that. That is a tool which uh, provides you ability to uh, engage customers with the video, short, long, different. Uh, there are a uh, webinar tool what we have been using in um, in so some of our projects called... Uh, what was the big, name? Big, 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 big Marker. marker? 
<laughs> big marker yes exactly yeah. that's the the tool very very good actually not only for automating the outreach of your for your customers like all reminders invites and stuff like that and follow-ups but it also provides the capability of automating the webinar itself so you can you know have a pre-recorded version you can already pre-populate different questions charts poll pools and then and then then yeah. some offers and then that that thing can go uh, almost automated fully and then uh, yeah. you are focused uh, Andres, on the delivering content yes andres i have a question to you now um we talked that there are dedicated automation platforms like let's say yes. active campaign like drip etc and then more and more tools like webinar tools include some kind of automation part so what's your view if you had already marketing automation platform would mm -hmm. you still rely on automation tools in in let's say uh, big marker or still you would prefer to integrate it directly with active campaign and have active campaign handle uh, automation yeah so i think the the essential question here is um what is your what is your strategy uh, in general do you want to solve a specific uh, um a specific uh, task like you have just a standalone webinar and you need to to automate then go just for this webinar platform which provides you this capability but otherwise if you really uh you know executing you know the 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 funneled approach for your marketing you have uh different uh, segments you work with you have different funnels micro funnels whatever else then of course marketing automation should be a central point of everything so when you are getting people in and then that platform executes everything because you can then measure it you can optimize it and uh you know it's easier to handle it, i would say yeah that. Yeah, I, I I also agree. It seems to me that one trend which happening with marketing technologies is is massive fragmentation, yes. massive fragmentation True. from one hand, and also overlap of functionalities from other hand. And to me, it seems that companies really need to be uh, very careful with their technology stack because it's very easy to get it out of control. So you have like twenty tools which you are paying like nine ninety nine per month, right? But quickly this number grows, cost grows. And also what's important to understand that complexities and risk go grows and particularly relating to handling customer information because as long yeah. as you have two tools where customer information resides like let's say marketing automation and crm you can control it but once you once you have webinars once you have assessments differently once you have different types of automation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. risks of gdpr violations increases and also risk risk of system um system breakdown also increases because yeah. every every technology you use have some risk of not being available at a given moment of time and the more you have of them the more danger that your system just one day when perhaps you have the largest webinar <laughs> of the year will just not work in any case i i would recommend definitely to have uh, an owner in your team who will be then responsible for the orchestrating and uh, managing all these technologies because otherwise it can go very very um, wild and uh, without any control so one sales people sales person will use an, one technology another will use another technology and then basically you will be facing situation when you overpay a lot because this small as ron said like nine dollars there five euros there and and then you ending up paying hundreds if not thousands monthly and uh, most importantly it will be very hard to manage and very hard to orchestrate and make things work together so therefore there should be still somebody either internally or externally whom you trust and whom then who is responsible for your strategy for marketing technologies same as with any other technology and if you are coming from technology business you know better than us how important it is okay so i think uh, uh, do we have any any questions else uh, or or we don't no we don't have at this no, time no, not this time. Nevertheless, uh, the half an hour is, is gone. Uh, I think it was a very good discussion what definitely can be continued. And uh, uh, we also encourage you, uh, please share your insights, share your questions so that we can then continue this discussion based on your interest. Otherwise, I would like to thank you for being with us. And uh, 
uh, again, as we continue every second Friday to have Fry Talks, next time we will be talking about the content strategy and how important it is uh, to have it, what it actually means, and how specifically technology companies can benefit from, from uh, having a right technology, a right content strategy. Uh, so Olga uh, Olifrenka will come uh, and talk to us. She's a marketing ma manager at uh, company Cyclum, which is a global digital service and software engineering company serving Fortune 500 uh, companies and having like more than three and a half thousand of employees all around the world. So it's a big, really experienced company. And she will be talking to us and sharing some do's and don'ts um, about, uh, you know, building and executing content strategy for technology company. Stay with us, uh, follow us on, uh, on LinkedIn uh, with the hashtag uh, uh, Fry Talks and uh, talk to you uh, in two weeks. Bye.